Hey guys, good afternoon. It's MJ. It is truly happy Saturday. Hope you all are having an amazing day today. Um, thank you for joining me. I am sorry I have not been on for the last few days. I have had a busy couple of days. Um, things have been just crazy. One day is gone and then another day is gone. But I have certainly been praying for you guys and thinking about you guys. And especially your prodigal. Um, you know, spiritual warfare has been crazy off the charts. I don't know about y'all, but for me, it has been off the charts. Um, and Jesus said that it would be in these final moments of the end of this dispensation of the church age. And that's just how it is. Um, so we need to be prayed up. We need to stay in the word and the word in us. Um, it's crazy. It is crazy what's going on out there. We can't even believe what we see half the time. Literally. Jesus said we walk by faith, not by sight. And literally what we're seeing out there, we are living in the days of Noah, guys, in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. So be careful what you're believing. I mean, our sight, what we see and what we're believing is happening is literally insane what's going on there. Be careful about politics, what you're seeing in the political arena. I am not political. This channel, by the way, is 100% pre-trib. If you're new to the channel, welcome to the channel family. Um, know that we will be praying for you and yours going forward and going forward it is going to get exponentially crazier spiritually I'm just going to tell you that straight up um, not for us so much um, we're swimming upstream we're not swimming downstream we're not floating downstream we're swimming upstream you know there is that current so spiritual warfare is at an all-time high. This channel is 100% pre-trib, and that means that the church, the believing, will be leaving soon and very soon. What does pre-trib mean? That means we, the church, the bride of Christ, the body of Christ, do not go through the tribulation. The tribulation is for uh, Israel. It is not for the church. It is not for us, the body of Christ. We are going to the wedding. So we'll be at a wedding for seven years while Israel will be in the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob is Israel. So pray for the peace of Israel right now. What's going on right now is absolutely insane. You know, they're going through a couple days of this peace agreements. Everybody but Hamas is in agreement with. Um, but I'm going to go through a little bit. Uh, I'm going to be sharing out of my journal. And I hope y'all are journaling, on board with journaling. Tomorrow is our journaling day. We are on the letter G. Um, Sundays is our journaling day. We are on the letter G. And you guys just take, you know, whatever starts with the, the letter G, whatever the Lord gives you, and sit 15 minutes with your journal. Um, and I hope you're taking 15 minutes a day with the Lord. Um, 10, 15 minutes a day. And he leads you to whatever scriptures that he leads you to. And... You know, G is for good, G is for God, G is for Gnosticism, believe it or not. I know it doesn't sound like it, but uh, GN, Gnosticism. G is for giants. We have a lot of giants in our life right now, guys. And But those giants are nothing. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. Greater is the army that is with us than the army that is against us. I am a former prodigal uh, of 11 years, and we know that um, the enemy tries to make it look like we have lost our salvation, but appearances are deceiving, aren't they? Because Jesus said on that cross, it is finished. And once we come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ as our personal savior, it is finished. Our sins, past, present, and future, have been cleansed by the power of that blood, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of this world. 
And although I got saved, born again at the age of 11, I had Catholic roots, went to a Catholic school in elementary school. Um, I had a lot of Catholic roots, went to Catholic church, obviously, but got saved at my great grandmother's church at the age of 11. And it took, okay, it took. When I was at that altar, Jesus met me there. And my name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And it wasn't erased, despite all the years that I was out there wandering. Not all who wander are lost. So this channel is to locate and educate those prodigals at risk. At risk of what? At risk of death and destruction, because Satan came to steal, kill, and destroy. And although he cannot, absolutely cannot have our salvation, because Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone secured our salvation on that cross, he can hijack our identity. He can take our peace. He can take our joy if we allow him. But Jesus said, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you, not as this world gives. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. So do not allow the enemy, and there is a literal enemy, okay? I know that there is a devil, for his demons had me in chains, a prisoner of sin and torment that started out as an innocent game. My hands were tied behind me with handcuffs made of steel. This life was one big question mark. My nightmare was very real. I wanted to run just as fast as I could to where I did not know, hoping to escape hell's fire and find shelter away from this foe. Through my journey, into darkness, I felt a hand reach out to me. He said that he was my savior and only his blood could set me free. He promised to protect me, keep me from all harm, clothe me with his righteousness and give my heart a song. He handed me the book of life and his words were very clear. This is my plan for all of mankind. You'll find your way in here. The only name under heaven that any of us can be saved, beloved, is Jesus Christ. Not Buddha, not Muhammad, not Allah, not the prayers of our ancestors. God does not have grandchildren. So know that we must be born again. Jesus said we must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So we are all conceived in this condition called sin. We are all born into this condition called sin. So... And the wages or the penalty of being born into this condition called sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Gift, the gift of God. For God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would simply believe would not perish but have everlasting life. So how do you get born again? You know, people think that, you know, you can get born again and lose being born again, or this channel's not about being religious, okay? Uh, Jesus Christ did not die for religion. He died for a relationship, not a religion. This is not about religion whatsoever. He died for a personal relationship. The only way to the Father is through the Son. So you simply, A, admit, God made it as simple as ABCs. God did not make this process hard to come to him. A is to simply admit, yes, I am a sinner in need of the Savior, and there is only one, one name under heaven that man can be saved, and that is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of this world, Jesus Christ, this world's only Savior. B is to believe, and this is key, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead for your own personal sins not only for the sins of this whole wide world, but your own personal sins. And see, call upon his name. The Bible says that all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Not might be saved if you complete this process or might be saved if you join a church. You become the church. You become the body of Christ. You become a child of God. The nanosecond that you say, I do, to Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. The moment that you say, I do to Jesus Christ and you're adopted into God's very own family. Not everybody here on this earth is a child of God. Despite the, you know, kumbaya and oh, everybody, yeah, we're all children of God and all the songs you hear in Hollywood, you know, we're all children of God and no, we're not. We're all creations of God up until the point that we say yes to the gospel, yes 
to the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of this world and our own personal sins, or the for, for the forgiveness of our own personal sins. Okay, so, and call upon his name today, guys. I would not wait another second because tomorrow's not promised. Time is not promised. And although I don't set dates on this channel, um, the rapture could happen today, maybe, maybe not, perhaps today, perhaps not. I don't set dates on this channel. I set a date with Jesus Christ every single day. But there is a chance. I mean, some people wake up today and today was, is, will be their last day. We don't know that. And as far advanced as technology is, man does not know when that date of his death will be. And although I believe 100% that this is the final generation, the final generation that's gonna hear that trumpet sound, the fig tree generation. That trumpet's gonna sound, the dead in Christ are gonna rise first, and we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in those clouds to meet our Lord in the air and ever so be with him. And the Bible tells us to encourage one another with these words, to comfort one another with these words. And that is what this channel hopes to do. Okay, so it's not about providing false hope and saying this is when Jesus is going to come because a lot of people have done that and that causes a weariness. Um, you know, so that we don't set dates. We don't set dates. And although we know that there is an intensifying, everything that Jesus said would be happening in the last days is happening like a woman in labor everything you know israel is surrounded god's beloved is surrounded by her enemies and god is about to step in for israel and my great grandmother used to tell me when you see jerusalem surrounded by her enemies you will know look up and lift up your head because jesus is coming to rapture his church and here i am so many years later and my grandmother my great grandmother used to tell me this when i was 10 11 years old and i used to roll my eyes and think what whatever you know and here i am sharing that with you and i never thought that i would be sharing that with anyone i mean didn't even know what israel was at the time I mean, we were in Israel last year. We're so blessed to have gone there and go get baptized. We were um, at the wall, put prayer requests for you all at His Truly in the Western Wall inside those little cracks. Um, walked those same walks, that, uh, the Via Dolorosa that Jesus walked. Um, just were absolutely, absolutely blessed. But my great grandmother used to tell me, when you see Jerusalem, the Bible says that Jerusalem will be a cup of trembling. And we are there. That's all you see on the news today is Israel. Israel, Israel. Israel is no bigger than the state of New Jersey. We have arrived, guys. And the Bible calls it like a woman in labor labor pains, the end days. This is not climate change. These are labor pains. The whole earth is groaning. The whole earth is groaning. The earthquakes, wars and rumors of war, we're here. The lawlessness. You can go into a store, and, and, and I heard this on the news yesterday, maybe the day before, I don't watch, a whole lot of news but you can go into the store and and I think it's in California and take a thousand dollars worth of merchandise um, and people go in with their calculators till they get nine hundred ninety five dollars worth of merchandise and walk out of the store and the managers can't do anything about it because it's not a thousand dollars worth now what planet are we even living on that does that we are in the days of noah what happens in the days of noah 
the Son of Man will come back and rapture his bride. Jesus Christ is ready to rapture his bride at any moment. He is at the door. So make sure that you're rapture ready. Please make sure that you're rapture ready. And does that mean that we're perfect? No, that means that we have exchanged our filthy rags. We're not saved by works. We're saved by grace alone through faith alone, in Christ alone. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We trade our own filthy rags for Christ's righteousness, and he robes us, and he puts that robe on us of righteousness. And we never take that off, because it is finished. And if the enemy ever tries to put those words in you, if if he tries to use that little word, if, if God really loved you, if God really cared, let me tell you that if word is spiritual warfare to the max. If is a spiritual warfare word. If God really cared about you, if you were really saved, you wouldn't be doing this. If God really cared about your life, then he wouldn't have taken this person or that person or this wouldn't have happened or that wouldn't have happened. The enemy is very, very clever. He's a liar. He is the father of all lies. He does what he does well, and I hate to give him a compliment. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. Don't let that someone be you, okay? And although, as I stated, he cannot, absolutely cannot have our salvation or any part of our salvation, he certainly will try to hijack our identity take our joy and our peace. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. We need our strength. We need our peace, the peace that passes all understanding, that guards our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. That means whatever's going on, at any time, the walls can be falling down. We have peace that passes all understanding because the Holy Spirit indwells us, lives inside of us, gives us that peace. And although we should be anxious and although anybody else on this planet would be anxious in, in, in similar circumstances, no, we have that peace because the Holy Spirit abides within us. And he's saying, be still, be still and know that I'm God. Be still and know that I've got this. And so we just ride with that. And although we should be experiencing all type of anxiety, the Lord is saying to us, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Trust me, I got this. Whereas a person, a natural person, who is not born again, who does not have the Holy Spirit indwelling them, would absolutely go crazy in similar circumstances. So those of us who have Christ indwelling us, oh, we have an inheritance, guys. We have an absolute inheritance that is beyond anything we could ever, ever, ever imagine. We cannot put a monetary value on that. So when we want to be down and we want to think, oh, I don't have money and I don't have this and I don't have that, we cannot put a monetary value on what indwells us. Remember that. There is no monetary value that we can ever put on the treasure entrusted in us. Just remember that. Okay, so... Tomorrow we're on the letter G. Who's tired? I am so tired. I don't know, physically tired, emotionally tired, just spiritually tired. I'm like, Lord, what's up with, you know, what's up? <laughs> you know, what's up with up? Let's go. You know, what are you waiting for? You know, this is just like, I've had three children of my own uh, natural births. And um, I don't know all your women out there um, who have had children. 
in the final moments. Um, or it's just, I'm done. You know, I am so done with this. And I know you can identify with me. I am so over this, waiting. You know, when that baby is just, you're just tired, you've got heartburn, and you're just fat, and just sweating all the time, your hormones are off the charts crazy, and you just wanna see that baby's face. And you've been waiting, and waiting, and yearning, and anticipating, and getting the room ready. Well, Jesus is the one getting the room ready. He said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. So he's the one getting that room ready. But here we are, waiting, got the heart burn. The heart is burning because we wanna look into our Savior's face. The one who took our place who didn't have to take our place. We owed a debt that we couldn't pay. And he paid that debt that he did not owe for us. And when he was on that cross, suffering for the, for the joy that was set before him, that's what he was longing for. Suffering for the joy that was set before him. We were the joy that was set before him. So we have to long and watch and wait for the joy that is set before him. us. Who is that? That's Jesus. So we're in the, I mean, we're not being crucified on that cross like he was, but we're watching and waiting, longing for the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, our blessed hope. So we're the ones now who are longing, longing and watching and waiting and for our blessed hope. It's just, I'm just so weary, I'm tired of it. It's just like when you're pregnant and just there, man, you're just there. But the Bible tells us not to be weary in well-doing. Just don't be weary. I know it's easier said than done, but. So yeah, we had two days of peace talks, these so-called peace talks moving to, and then they're moving to Egypt next week. So-called peace talks. But when they're saying peace and safety, sudden destruction shall come upon them and they shall not escape. That's not us them when they're saying peace and safety now they've been saying peace and safety for quite some time now there's a great possibility this could be uh it we're close anyway i don't whether this is it or not they've been saying peace and safety for a while now you know although hamas is not in agreement with this we don't know what what could turn here you know we don't know we don't know we can't even see beyond our nose. But God knows the end from the beginning. That's why we need to stay close to him. That's why we need to watch and wait. Draw near to God and he will draw near to us. Be still and know that I am God, the Bible says. And when we be still, that doesn't mean to go to him and drop all our problems and remind him of everything that's wrong and, you know, go to him and this is wrong, Lord, and this is wrong and this is how this has to be fixed. And, you know, that's how I used to pray, take my wheelbarrow full of problems and just, and this and that and this and that and make myself even more anxious, you know, magnify the problem, you know, the Bible says magnify the Lord, like a magnifier. We are created actually. Our spirit is created to magnify. So when we go to the Lord, we magnify him. We magnify him. He is holy. He is worthy to be praised. And so sometimes when we go to him, we have that magnifier. We magnify the problem and we magnify it and magnify it and get more anxious and more anxious. 
instead of trusting in his character, trusting in his goodness, trusting in his faithfulness, trusting that he is faithful to his word. Now his timing might seem off to us, but who are we? God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways, different than our ways. Thank God for that, huh? So we have to trust that he knows what he's doing. He's God. He's trustworthy. He's faithful. He's true. We have to trust that he has our best interest at heart. Always. Always. And although it might not seem like that, remember I said we don't walk by the flesh. We walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith. Especially in these final moments of the end of this dispensation of the church age because so much is happening in this physical realm, in the political realm, in the political arena. This clown, clown, crazy world that's going on in this political spectrum. It's insane. Just insane. And I'm not political at all. Uh, there's just... It's a joke. It's a joke. It's just like puppets pulling strings, these strings being pulled. But remember, God allows all this to happen. God allows it all to happen. Yeah. And Romans 8, 28, my favorite scripture. God causes all things, not some things, all things to work together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. All things, even this, fill in your own blank. Even sexual abuse, even domestic violence, even divorce, even fill in your own blank. That is a promise of God. God does not break his promises. Okay. So I do know that spiritual warfare is ridiculous in the church today, especially in that remnant that is watching and waiting. And there is no partial rapture, by the way. I've heard that ridiculous, uh, little thing going around too, that only those who are looking up are going to get raptured. No, the whole body of Christ is going to get raptured. The church is going to get raptured. Um, even prodigals, even um, those who believe they're going to go through the tribulation. Um, we're all fellows in the same ship, so we can fellowship. All right. I just don't want anybody on here leaving me uh, 200 scriptures about how we have to go through the tribulation because Jesus Christ took 100% of our wrath on that cross because our wrath was satisfied on that cross. God's wrath was satisfied on that cross when Jesus said, it is finished. So that's what the tribulation is. Okay, it is for the salvation of the Jewish nation and to put an end to iniquity. Okay, so where did an end to iniquity happen for us, the church? on that cross when Jesus said it is finished your sins past present and future are cleansed by the power of that blood so we don't go through that tribulation so don't let anybody tell you oh we're in the tribulation now or we have to go through the tribulation that's a lie from the pit of hell <clears throat> we don't go through the tribulation Jesus took 100% of, of God's wrath for us for our sin on that cross. Understand that. And it'll be a game changer for you. So because we're going through so much ridiculous um, spiritual warfare, we need to encourage one another. And Jesus said, where there are two or more gathered in my name, I am here amongst you and with you. So here he is amongst us. We don't have to be in a physical brick and mortar church, although that's beneficial and that's encouraged. You know, um, Jesus is here with us. So we encourage one another, 
even more so as we see the day approaching. All right, so, um, so that's what this channel is really about, not to provide false hope because like I said, I don't set dates um, and to pray for one another, remind one another. And I love you guys' comments, by the way. I try to uh, respond to all your comments. I, I can't, you know, sometimes I miss a few, but that to me is true fellowship, you know, encouraging one another, helping each other just and, and you guys can answer comments too. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. We're all fellows in the same ship so we can fellowship here. Um, pray for one another and remind one another that Jesus keeps his word. Time is up on God's prophetic calendar, guys. I don't know exactly how long we have, but we know how very close we are because of what's going on in Israel right now. And here's something, um, don't comply I have to get a drink of water, sorry. Do not comply with any of these jabs. I'm not giving medical advice here. I am a nurse, but I am not giving medical advice. I'm not giving any kind of this advice, but you know, there's this new monkey pox going around and all this other stuff, but I'm just saying, all right, just Pray for discernment. The Bible says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him come to me and I will give it to him. Not me, God. Pray for discernment. Pray for wisdom. Seek the Lord. Um, yeah, do not comply, for goodness sake. Um, something big is on the horizon. I feel that um, prayerfully. Hopefully it's, it's the rapture. I have been feeling that. And... We just keep looking up, guys. That's all we do. Jesus told us to lift up our heads and look up for our redemption draws nigh. Um, don't believe in this physical world around us, what's going on, because a lot of things is very questionable these days. Very, very questionable. So I don't know, I'm at 32 minutes already, guys. I was gonna share something else, but Maybe I'll share that tomorrow since I'm at 32 minutes. Um, I'll just share something else from my Poetic Justice and I'll share what I was going to share in tomorrow. Um, yeah. So, you know, although we are not created for, I mean, although we're not saved by good works, we're, we're saved for good works. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians that we are his poema. Isn't that beautiful in the Greek? We are his poema, his workmanship. The Bible says we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works that God created before the foundations of this work that we should walk in them. Isn't that awesome? Don't you want to know what those works are? And you know, it's not like shaking a tambourine and Zimbabwe somewhere we just naturally walk that out as he sanctifies us on a daily basis that's why journaling has come to be it becomes like your best friend you know it becomes such a safe place to fall you know you just come and write and God brings up so much stuff that is buried underneath there unless you know you know what's in there and not all of it's bad, a lot of it's good because you know what, a lot of us as children, um, we bury uh, because our innocence was taken as a child or whatever, we bury our true identity down there. And although we are true, truly new creations created in Christ, old things have passed away, behold all things become new, there's a lot of bitternesses down there. And the Bible says, let no root of bitterness spring up amongst you and defile many. And, the, and that's what happens in a lot of families, whether Christian or not. Um, um, because we refuse to deal with the roots of bitterness, <clears throat> excuse me, in our childhood. And, you know, because of divorce or because of uh, trespasses against us, things that have happened to us. And it's time to deal with those bitternesses against us and things that have happened to us. Just allow the Holy Spirit to gently lead you and show you 
through your own writing and just write, take that quiet time, get away with the Lord and, you know, make it, make it your quiet time with him and he'll show up. He shows up big time. Give him a page and he'll write a book or two or three. Anyway, I love you guys. Um, know that I've been praying for you and yours and especially your prodigal. I'm going to read one more and then I'm going to let you go until tomorrow. And this is called God's Front Porch. As I stood upon God's front porch, the voice said, enter in. The light inside became so brilliant, clearly exposing my guilt and sin. Looking down at my filthy garments, I turned and started to run. I knew that I was so unworthy and ashamed of the things that I'd done. Startled by his presence, there my Savior stood. I fell to my knees when I saw him, just as I knew that anyone would. His voice was so very gentle, his eyes so full of grace. He looked at me and spoke kindly. Enter in, child, your sins I've erased. As I stood on God's porch sobbing, it all became so clear. All that I learned about him in Sunday school. Yes, my Savior was finally here. As I look back at, ac across the threshold at the multitude standing in line, my Heavenly Father embraced me as he welcomed me into dying. Father, why is Jesus crying? What has made him grieve? Where are all these people going? Why must they all leave? His reply will forever remain embedded in my tender spirit. Child, every sin they have ever committed, today they must each one bear it. For them, my son's death has been in vain. By his blood they could have been saved. He must now say goodbye eternally to the ones who have rejected his name. Oh, Father, I'm so very grateful, I cried, so unworthy to be in your home. As I bowed my head in worship, my, I felt my tears touch his very throne. I woke up in a panic, and I heard the Spirit say, Go tell the ones you saw standing in line that my blood has paved the way. Tell them about the banquet and how I've saved them all a seat. Tell them that I have paid in full to prevent this eternal defeat. Tell them that I am knocking, that they must soon answer the door. Behold, I am coming quickly and time will be no more. Luke 13, 25, but when the head of the house has locked the door, it will be too late. Then you will stand outside locking, knocking and pleading, Lord, open the door for us. But he will reply, I do not know you. And that's something that no Christian, true Christian will ever hear. And nothing that you will ever want to hear if you're not born again. So turn to Jesus today. He loves you more than you could ever, ever, ever know. Okay, guys, until next time, keep looking up. Our redemption draws nigh. God bless you guys.